Hey everybody, Chad here. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about my first experience with a Thai woman. And I'm not talking about sexu sexual stuff or whatever, but I'm just talking about the the dynamics of the my first experience with a Thai woman. And in no way in this video that I don't, you know, I don't want to come across negative. I don't want to come across like I hate Thailand because I don't. I lived in Thailand for one year and I'm planning on going back. I came home to once I'm, you know, I'm not over 50 or retirement visa. So, you know, if, if you're not over 50 or retirement visa, there's other ways you can stay. But, you know, I stayed a year. Then I came back to visit my family. Then I'm, I'm planning on going back probably in the next five months uh, and pro hopefully stay for another for another year. So that being said, that in no way that I'm talking negative, you know, with any country, okay, every country has its pros and cons. And this is why, this is, this is why I tell people is that it, what happened to Thailand, if it was legal to do in the United States, women would do it. If it was legal to do in Europe, women would do it. If it was legal to do in Canada, women would do it. And I hate to kind of say that, not every woman, of course, but you know, a lot of women and men would do this. What what takes place in Thailand? If it was legal here, people would do it. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, that's just my personal opinion, but no way I'm being negative. This is just information for you, especially if you haven't been to Thailand before. And I can promise you, once I tell you my story, I promise you it has happened to you. No matter if you fell for it or you didn't fall for it, it has happened to you. So if you're new going to Thailand, listen up because it's going to happen. I promise you. Okay. And, you know, depending upon, at least you're kind of ready for it. If you're kind of a newbie to Thailand, if you kind of don't know, um, you don't, you know, you don't travel that much. Just because you travel, you know, Th Thailand, Philippines, it's another can of worms. So handling a Thai woman. Okay. So this, I'm going to go kind of short, sweet to the point. I'm not going to get very descriptive. Uh, I was planning, this was uh, probably a couple years ago. I was planning a year and a half ago, something like that. Maybe a couple years ago. Uh, time goes by super fast. So I was planning my trip to Thailand and I was working out the visas. I already paid for stuff, working off all the visa stuff. I was going to Thailand under the sandbox program. Um, then I, I don't really know kind of how, I don't know if she found me because I was like on my Facebook page. I was, I was posting, I'm getting ready for Thailand, whatever. So I don't know if she found me through there, but so somehow, uh, we started talking on Facebook, Facebook messenger. So I can't remember really how, who initiated, I think she initiated, initiated me. So then, so then we started chatting, kind of pen palling back and forth. I'm horrible texting anyway. So I've always been bad at texting. I'm not really a guy that sits there and be like, oh my goodness, I'm, you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I now I answer texts, whatever, but I can kind of feel something was off a little bit. Like I can kind of feel that she was trying to play me um, um, within those emails, but I was just kind of fluff it off, fluff it off. Uh, and But anyway, you know, this went on probably like a month and a half before my flight to Thailand. So, you know, she wanted to know where I was going, where I was staying. So I said, well, you know, once, you know, I might have the quarantine when I get to Thailand. And once I'm done with quarantine, I'll contact you. You can come over and so we can meet in person. So that's exactly what I did. When I flew to Thailand. I had a whole bunch of connecting flights. For, I mean, started off in Ohio, flew to Chicago, from Chicago to Abu Dhabi, then Abu Dhabi to Phuket, Thailand. Then once I got to Phuket, you know, there's a whole bunch of, at that time, during a sandbox program, you got to take a bunch of tests and you might have to quarantine. You had to quarantine at least until you came back negative on your test. So, but long story short, you know, I contact her. Um, I, I contacted, hey, I'm here, but I'm just waiting for the okay for my test results. Right now I'm still quarantining and, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, call you or text you that, you know, it's okay to come over. So, but anyway, my test, test results came back negative and I know I texted her, said, Hey, you know, if you still want to come over, if not, we can do it tomorrow. So by, by then it's, it's already like 9 30, 10 PM at night. You know, I'm exhausted because of the time difference. I'm exhausted and excited at the same time. You're excited. Anytime you go on vacation, you're excited. So I'm kind of exhausted, excited at the same time. And you know, I text her and she's like, okay, I'll be over. I have my friends drop me off. So I'm like, cool. So, <laughs> you know, when, 
when she when she comes, you know, I tell her like where I'm at. You know, actually, because I stayed at the Adamatra Resort. That's a huge resort, by the way. I mean, huge, huge resort. Like you, you know, sometimes you stayed in a resort, but this one's just huge. It, you know, it kind of started off kind of bottom of the hill, and it kind of twisted and turned way up on the top of the hill. So if you've seen it or if you stayed there, you know what I'm talking about. That's such a huge resort. So anyway, you know, I go down and to to meet her to kind of walk her up to the room and because by then it's like nighttime so then you know i already ate food service waiting i already had, I had room service because waiting for my quarantine to kind of pass through and i wasn't really too i wasn't really too sure if they're going to give me my results at nighttime or wait till morning so anyway you know being a guy you know i go down meet her i mean she's beautiful by the way she's she was young she's i think she was like 22 23 something like that so she, she was like beautiful by the way and you know <clears throat> i go up to her introduce herself so of course she kind of recognized me then i recognize her just from pictures and sometimes you know we did the video chats on on uh you know messenger so you know i knew what she looked like she knew what i looked like at least in a video chat not really in person so but anyway she had her friend drop her off so i said no i'm way up the hill so she, at that time you could drive up the hill the longer i stayed at Adamantra, they kind of cut that off uh, they didn't allow guests to kind of drive up the hill. So then, so they drive, they drive up the hill. And when she gets out of the car, she, I'm, I'm not joking. She had like two or three suitcases with her <laughs> to, to bring in my room. So at first I'm thinking like, uh, kind of like overwhelming a little bit. But first I'm thinking suitcases. Like, <laughs> that's why I was like, okay. So uh, at first I'm thinking to myself, dude, what do I get myself into? <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, because I think she's thinking, but she already knew at that time that that I'd never been to Thailand before. I did a video on this. You know, she kind of, uh, I did a video on the two top two top questions that Thai girls ask you. And she, she did that to me and, you know, talked to our messenger. You know, this is, is this your first time coming to Thailand? Of course I say yes. You know, and sooner or later, have you ever had a Thai girlfriend before? Uh, of course I say no. So she, she's thinking I'm fresh meat. She, she's thinking like, oh, he don't know. Um, you know, that's just, you know, sometimes how the nature of it is, you know, it's, it's not, it's not negative, but you know, she, in her eyes, I'm a newbie. You know, I don't know what goes on in Thailand. I don't know what Thai girls do. So, you know, I'm kind of like wide open to everything and I'll, you know, she's thinking I'll believe anything. So, but anyway, she knew this. She knew I was going to stay three months. I was on a three months visa because I told her. So she's probably thinking like, well, I'm going to stay with this guy for three months. <laughs> okay. And, you know, she was kind of, being 22, she was kind of pretty smart chatting with me. I mean, she never, never asked me for money. Never. I mean, I cut that off right in the beginning so she could sense it. So she never asked me for money. It was kind of, it was kind of, she kind of really played it like, like, you know, we're gonna, you know, meet, see if we like each other, hang out. If not, you know, you know, that's it. You know, just kind of like a normal meet and greet type of thing. You know, even though you're chatting on chatting online, messenger or whatnot, you have to kind of wait till you meet the person in person, see how they are, see if they gel with you and stuff. So, so during that time, she didn't ask me for money, didn't ask me for nothing. So she played it pretty good. Let me take this off, it's hanging off my head. Um, so, so anyway, she's bringing, she's bringing the suitcases in, in and I could pick up right away uh, that, uh, that I'm just sensing, I'm kind of good at sensing situations. I'm, I'm really kind of good at intuition. Now, sometimes I don't follow my intuition, <laughs> but anyway, I'm kind of really good to kind of pick up on stuff and I could really sense that, you know, she's experienced, she's done this before, you know, she's, you know, she, she just, she was just too you know, put together, too calm, too outgoing, you know, she wasn't shy, you know, meeting for the first time, you could just tell coming to my room, she was just, you know, she was crazy comfortable, you know, you know, kind of like flopping on the bed, walking to the bathroom, start in the water, take a bubble bath, I mean, she was just very comfortable, like she was in her zone, so I mean, right there, I could, you know, I could pick up, like, oh, you know, uh, she's, you know, at that time, I want to say, oh, she's a working girl. You know, she at least works in a bar or she's a bar girl. Um, at the time, I didn't really know the term freelance. Um, a lot of girls would deny that. I mean, they're, they're, they're paint the picture of, 
they have a normal job, they're paying, the, even though you never go to their work, you never know what they do. Um, so they make something up, um, but they, they don't want you to know what they do. And most of the time they don't want you to know what they do because, uh, because they don't want you to know you're going with other guys. Because of course, you know, if you know they're going with other guys, then you're going to assume that, well, they, they're, they, they got other little boyfriends and people, guys they see on a regular basis. So she was just way too comfortable coming in. But I, what I did, I just kind of played along. I didn't say anything. I kind of played along, played along with her. She took a bubble bath and, and you know, we, you know, we went out walking. She showed me some, where some stuff was and, and I walked around a little bit, came back and, and kind of had a good night. Uh, then the next morning, okay, that when I woke up, remember this is this is literally my second day in Thailand. I didn't have no money on me, okay, not not Thai bot anyway. I had USD, I had cash that I brought from from United States, so I, I needed to exchange my money. So then I, <clears throat> I told her why well, I need you know I need to get some money, exchange some money. So I walked down to she followed me, so I walked down to the the reception area to ask them where I can exchange money. So they said, well, anywhere, just walk around. And I said, well, no, I want to know the best place, you know, where I'm going to get the best bang for my buck, the highest exchange rate. So they told me where it was. And so her name was Nat, or that was her nickname, like Nit or Nat, something like that. So then it wasn't her real Thai name, but that was, you know, a lot of them have English nicknames. Um, so, so Nat says, well, I can take you. I have a friend that you don't have to take a taxi. You know, she could just pick us up and, you know, we could go and, and, and so you can just change your money. So I said, okay, cool. So, you know, they take, you know, her friend picks us up. You now we drive there. It's kind of, it's kind of like a little bit in Phuket town. So it's a big kind of the mall there. And on the third floor, fourth floor, they have all the banks up there. So I go up there you Now we get there. We walk around trying to find it. Of course I'm new. I don't know where nothing is. So we find it, you know, I, I, I go to the bank everything's good you know i i didn't exchange everything i had you know i only exchanged certain amounts um so i don't exchange everything so i forget what i exchanged at the time maybe i exchanged a thousand dollars or something like that so anyway you know the the banker gives me all my money put it in my pocket didn't think anything and we're kind of i think we walked around a little bit bought a snack because we we're kind of hungry of course i paid for it being a guy so now i don't mind doing that um then, then I, then we'll go down. There's a McDonald's sitting down on the lower floor, but she contacts her friend. So her friend to come pick us up. So she contacts her friend that we're ready to come be picked up. So we're sitting there kind of at McDonald's. We're not eating at McDonald's. We're just kind of sitting outside. So then when we're sitting there, she comes up with this scheme that, that, and she didn't, she kind of sp spoke broken English. Her, her English was really bad. So she trans, I knew what she was asking me. She's trying to ask me for money, but I kind of played stupid. Like, you know, what, what? Then she translated on the phone and then she, you know, showed it to me. So it said that, that she wanted 20,000 baht. And she made up the story that she needed 20,000 baht because her family, you know, her and her family own this motorbike company and they need 20,000 baht to, to pay the motorbike company. So then I said, so then I kind of shook my head and I said, like, no, I'm not going to give you 20,000 baht. And then, then she proceeded like, you know, why well, I need 20,000 baht. And she translated it again, why well, I need 20,000 baht. And she kind of changed her story a little bit here. I'm really good because I work in sales. I'm really good at picking up like little minor changes. So, uh, she changed her story here. Well, you know, we're behind, you know, on the car. So I need 20,000 baht to, you know, pay, you know, to help the family pay the car. Now, Twenty thousand bots a lot, and uh, you know it's seven hundred bucks, seven hundred fifty bucks for somebody you don't know. <laughs> now, I'd rather give the money to my mom. I mean, quite honestly, if I'm gonna help somebody, no matter the help family. Uh, so I, again, I say no. By this time, she's kind of getting angry, <laughs> and she's like sitting there. She like reaches out her hand, like I'm on this side. She's kind of on the other side of the table, and she's reaching out her hand like this. It's like, no, you give me twenty thousand baht. No, imagine it's a kind of in Thai a little bit. You know, it's kind of Thai and English at the same time. And then she's like, and I'm like, no. It's like, no, you give me 20,000 baht. I'm like, no, I'm not going to give you 20,000 baht. <laughs> no, no way. I'm not doing it. 
So then it kind of was awkward. She didn't like talk to me. I didn't really talk to her. Then at that time, her friend came. So we get in the car. You know, I paid for her friend had put uh, gasoline in the car. So I paid for the gas, the, the Benson. That's what they kind of call it there in Thailand. Uh, uh, I paid for the Benson, you know, for her, but she dropped us off, picked us up, taking us back. And, and she was kind of okay in the car. So I thought it was gonna, you know, I thought it was gonna be awkward because I told her no. So she was kind of okay to the car. So we get back to the room and I think we had, you know, we had some dinner or whatever, uh, went out to eat. And then of course I paid for that. And, but I mean, that took up doing kind of that, that whole thing that took up being jet lagged and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I probably passed out that night, probably at 6 PM, 7 PM, just because of jet lag, I was so tired. And at the same time, you know, I'm already planning to stay long stay. So I'm not on a week vacation. You know, I'm not on a two week vacation where I have to suck everything dry. So, you know, I have to do the most possible. So, so, uh, so I, I basically conked out, fell asleep. Uh, no, I could kind of hear her roaming around, you know, because, she, because at that point I could tell that, you know, she was used to working at night, but she would just stay up all night long, you know? So I, another point in there, you know, you know, I, you know, I knew she's used to running around, you know, she's a night girl, uh, good or bad, whatever you want to think. But, you know, she's used to staying up, um, because I would, I would pass out. Now she didn't take anything from me. I had all my, all my valuables. You know, locked in the safe in the hotel. She couldn't really take anything unless she wanted to take my clothes and I run around naked in Thailand. But other than that, you know, she couldn't take nothing. So, so, so I fall asleep. I wait, I, I fall asleep probably the, the next, like almost like a few weeks in Thailand. She wasn't with me that long, but I would go to sleep at 6 PM and I would wake up at three or four in the morning. That was kind of my routine. Um, just with jet lag from the United States and stuff like that. And I wasn't really forcing myself to stay up. I would just go go back to the hotel and my resort and pass out. But anyway, what I noticed was that, you know, she started pouting because I didn't give her this 20,000 baht, okay? So when I work in sales, it's kind of like the takeaway. That's what she's trying to pull with me a little bit, kind of take it away that, you know, take away her attention to me, kind of pout. And so she stayed with me. At that point, she stayed with me with me for another, I think two days or two nights. And, but the whole time, those two days and two nights, I literally didn't see her. She didn't go anywhere. Okay. She stayed in my room, but because I was falling asleep at 6 PM at night, she was waking up about 6 PM, 7 PM at night. So she would stay up all night, like in my room, you know, eating, eating snacks, chatting, you know, probably chatting with other guys or friends who knows. But then the next morning, you know, when I would wake up, you know, she would be asleep. <laughs> so, and I knew she's probably staying asleep on purpose, but I didn't care, you know what I mean? Because I thought, well, if you're going to pout because I don't give you 20,000 baht, I'm just gonna let you pout. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm thinking to myself, I'm not gonna give it to you. So you're not gonna break me down. And I think that's what she was kind of doing. You know, one, she was used to staying up at nighttime, but you know, she was just laying in bed sleeping then, then when I would, when I, when I would come back to the room wandering around all day long, when I would come back, I'd be dead tired. Once I would, once I would lay down and go to sleep, then I could feel her get up. Okay. Now she would stay in the room, of course, but she did this for a couple of days. You know, I never cracked. I never gave her the 20,000 baht. I, I basically called her bluff. Then on the, on the third day, I got up like I usual, I usually do like at four in the morning. She's, you know, she's conked out. And, uh, you know, I, as it got daylight, I went down, did some stuff, walked around, went to, went to go eat. Then I came back around lunchtime to see if she was still awake. I wasn't really thinking anything just to see if she's still awake or what, you know, what's going on. Because at this point I was really kind of thinking, you know what, you know, she's been here like three days. She's just sitting in my room pouting and sleeping the whole time. So I just need to, I just need to tell her to go, you know what I mean? Like I... You know, like I, you know, it's just you know, making my vacation miserable, whatever. I always have to come back to the room and check on her. And, you know, she kind of wants to play like a teenager, a little game. So, so, so that's what I'm kind of thinking in my head. So when I come back to the room and I walk in the room that she's taking a shower. So I was like, oh, cool. She's up. <clears throat> I'm kind of preparing to talk to her because I'm thinking, you know, I'm done playing her game. So when she's done with the shower, I could hear her on the phone, you know, talking to one of her Thai friends. 
So I kind of got, I kind of got the feeling that she's going to leave. So then I thought, well, I don't need to talk to her then. Uh, so when she come out, she's getting dressed. So I could tell she's going to leave. She's not saying anything to me at, in, in, at the, at this point. Then, then, uh, th uh, then I'm kind of sitting on the bed a little bit, so I'm just waiting for her to get ready. But at first, I wasn't thinking, well, maybe, maybe we might go somewhere, go out to eat, or go do something. But I can kind of sense it. You know, I can sense that uh, she's leaving. So, because I didn't, I didn't give her money. She's leaving because I didn't give her twenty thousand baht, like what, like what she wanted. So, so then, so then, I mean, probably five or ten minutes pass. She gets ready. Then she tells me, and she kind of translates it on her phone. Then she like gives it to me, and it pretty much says that, like, oh, babe, you know, I gotta go. Um, I gotta, I gotta make money for my family. Uh, you know, sorry, blah blah blah. And, I, and then I said, okay, you know, you gotta go. You gotta go work. Okay, you know, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So then, at that point, I still didn't break down. You know, she's probably thinking I'm, I'm gonna break down, but now she's kind of really taken away. She's kind of gonna walk away and leave. So I, you know, so I said, okay, you know, you gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta, you know, if you gotta send money home to your family, you gotta work and send money home to your family. So, uh, so then, so then she's like, well, you're not mad or anything? I'm like, no, I'm not mad. And you know, it, I mean, it is what it is. So, uh, so anyway, she calls her friend, come pick her up. She already did this, by the way. So uh, she must have called her friend, you know, uh, you know, a half hour ago or something like that. But by the time she's done talking to me, her friend texts her that she's there. So that her friend already comes to the room, knocks on the door. So I answer. Then, then her friend came to help her. Remember, she had these three suitcases. So I said, oh, no, 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 I'll get the suitcases. And her friend's like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, you know. So I'm, I even carried her suitcases <laughs> I even carried her suitcases out to the car uh, because it didn't, I mean, it was, at this point, it didn't affect me because I just felt like, dude, you're just, you know, you're just trying to do a little mini scam or whatever, you know, try to get money. Uh, 20,000 baht is way, way too much. And so she's not sending 20,000 baht home to her family. And uh, that's a whole never, another story, um, you know, on that. Uh, I mean, just a pre, I mean, this is another video. But most of the time, when Thai girls say they're sending money home to their family, most Thai girls will only send home average anywhere between three thousand and five thousand baht per month. So if you're giving them like twenty thousand or thirty thousand, and they're telling you they're sending it to their dad, their mom, their family, their sister, they're not. Now the the truth is they are telling the truth partially because they are sending money home. They're just not sending everything home like they're telling you. They're telling you they're sending everything home, but they're only sending like a small portion home. And then they're keeping the rest for themselves, you know, to go out drinking with their friends or whatnot. Uh, so that's usually what they do. Uh, but anyway, it didn't end there. So I, I carried the bags out, put them in a the car, whatever. You know, I hugged her goodbye and, you know, they leave. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like excited at this point. <laughs> It wasn't really hurt, uh, but I was like, oh, thank God she left because she's just sitting in my room sleeping. So, uh, so then, you know, for the next couple of days, I, you know, do my thing, run around Thailand, explore. It's first time in Thailand, but then I kind of felt bad. So then I thought, well, maybe I should text her because I kind of felt bad a little bit. I thought, well, maybe I came off mean. Maybe I came off, you know, too, you know, you know, not falling for a trick. So I just basically called her bluff and let her sleep. You know, I didn't, I didn't try to wake her up and say, Hey, you know, let's go out to eat. I, I was just kind of like, Hey, you want to be a baby and sleep? I'll let you sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, you know, I sent her a text, more of a, a professional text to say, Hey, look, you know, no hard feelings. And I'm sorry. I, if I came off mean, I apologize. Um, but you know, it, you know, you asking me for money kind of threw me off. So, you know, it kind of is what it is, but I just didn't want to, you know, I just didn't want to leave on bad, bad term or bad grounds or whatever. And, and, but that kind of, been, what happened was that kind of initiated another conversation. So since I reached out to her and I'm apologizing, she's kind of thinking, oh, I can kind of rope him in a little bit. So then she starts talking about her family sending money home that, you know, she wanted to see me. And sometimes she would text me and be like, oh, I want to go get my hair done. Can you pay for it? So I would say, then I would, I never gave her money. I would say, oh, you know, stop by. Then she would never stop by. 
then then finally this now this is over the next week so finally we're, we're kind of texting on not a lot but just the on and off then she then she said well then she said well baby if you want me to come you know i want a hundred thousand because she knew she knew i'm staying for three months so she remembered that and she wanted a hundred thousand for three months to stay with me for three months Besides twenty thousand, now she upped it to one hundred thousand because now she's thinking I'm kind of warming up to her. That so she's thinking, well, I'm gonna give her money. So then I start to go. I kind of played around with her a little bit. So I started negotiating with her. I was like, well, I'm not gonna give you a hundred thousand right up front. I go. Then I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hundred thousand. I'll give you a hundred thousand, but we're breaking it up weekly. Okay, and if you want to come over. But anyway, it never happened because I was kind of playing with her. She was playing with me. I knew her trick. She knew I wasn't falling for it. So, you know, I never paid her any money, anything like that. But that's how far she was going. It first started off 20000 Then it started off 100000 Then that's kind of where it ended. But you, know, you kind of have to be on guard, especially if you're new to Thailand. You're young. Maybe you just got divorced. You just, you know, you're kind of starting over in life as far as relationship. You go to Thailand. You like the attention. You just have to be careful that you don't get wrapped up in these types of situations. And it will happen. I mean, I promise you it will happen. You will 100%, 110%, 500% have a, a Thai girl ask you for money. Now, sometimes it's a teeny tiny bit sometimes you know it can be as crazy as twenty thousand or a hundred thousand a hundred thousand like a talk a hundred thousand like happened to me but you know i you know i kind of stuck to my guns i never paid it but what was interesting was i told this story to she's now my thai girlfriend but when i first met her you know i told her this story and right away when i told her the story she I told her a story about, you know, how she changed from 20,000 to 100,000. So right away, she knew, you know, right away, she was like, oh, she has a Thai boyfriend. And I was like, what are you talking about? She has a Thai boyfriend. And she's like, no, that sounds like a Thai boyfriend. That's what a Thai boyfriend does. You know, um, uh, you know, she, she, she went back with her Thai boyfriend. Then she told a Thai boyfriend about the experience and a Thai boyfriend starts whispering in her ear, asking for this, asking for that. You know, if he wants you to come now, ask him for a hundred thousand. So, you know, she's like, I guarantee you she has a Thai boyfriend. Because she said, that's what Thai boyfriends do. They do that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so then I, yeah, that was an interesting, interesting little twist on it. And I will do other videos since I lived in Thailand for a year. I will do another video uh, going off on Thai boyfriends. What you have to know on a snippet really quick, I'm not gonna go into it, that most girls, okay, that work in a bar, that do freelance, uh, most girls in the red light district, most girls in these popular tourist places like Patong, Wahin, Patia, you know, heavy tourist areas, most girls, Thai girls, they have Thai boyfriends. So, so for one, for one, you want to be a little bit careful, but they do have Thai boyfriends. They don't tell you they have a Thai boyfriend. <laughs> Okay, they want to make it look like they're single. They don't have anybody. But most of them, not all of them, but most of them have Thai boyfriends. And when you live in Thailand and you stay there for a length of time, you will see it. You will see their Thai boyfriend drop them off on Bangalore Road. Drop them off at the bar they work. You know, you, you will see them. I mean, Patong is fairly small. So if you're really out and about, you might even run into them with their Thai boyfriend. Their makeup, who it is, or it's just a friend. It's, you know, he's just a taxi guy, whatever, but it's a Thai boyfriend. So you gotta be aware of that too. Most of these girls have Thai boyfriends and they got two, three, four Farang boyfriends that actually give them money. You know what I mean? So that's a whole nother video, but that's kind of my, my personal experience. My first experience actually uh, with a Thai woman, my first experience with a Thai woman actually asking for money. Um, didn't fall for it but I just want to share that with you share that with everybody because no matter if you're a man or you're a woman it happens to women too that come go to Thailand and they go to you know go go bars or sexy men you know the, the men do the same thing to women and lots of times you know they're working men they know what they're doing they've been doing it for a long time so it goes both ways uh, so you know it's just something to kind of keep in back of your mind don't fall for it the more ready you are to go you know, you have a wonderful time. Thailand's a great place. Thailand's a great country. 
but you know, there's just certain things you need to watch out for. Other than that, my friends, it's over and out. I'll see you next time.